Excuse me. Warning this time. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Yeah. I don't mean any offense by this, but has anyone ever said that you look like Rick from Pawn Stars? Oh, wow. What other person? Hey there, everyone. Today I'm doing something for the very first time, and that is taking a river boat tour. In just a little bit, myself and Matt PG will be boarding the Gateway Clipper and doing a really fun river boat adventure. If you'd like to join us, simply come along with us. the famous Gateway Clipper. So as you make your way down the ramp, you're going to be greeted with murals on both sides depicting the history of Pittsburgh. For example, this one says, Out of Smoke and Ash, uh, the Great Fire of 1845, Pittsburgh emerged as an industrial haven at this time. Pittsburgh was a leader in the manufacturing of coal, glass, iron, steel, and boat making. And along the way, on both sides, there are murals, pictures, information, letting you find out and educate yourself on how far Pittsburgh has come over the different decades and even centuries. Here's World War II, Pittsburgh Renaissance, 1947, so on and so forth. So as you make your way down, you can definitely stop, take your time, read and appreciate all the history surrounding the great city of Pittsburgh. There's a great one showing the downtown area. Right there is Point State Park and where Fort Pitt used to be and the skyline. Somewhere up there is our hotel and Gateway Clipper. That's what we're riding today. And there's a Matt PG. He's part of the tour as well. Crossing over a little girder bridge here. Carp Cove. Yeah, this is Carp Cove without a doubt. The sign is not lying. There's uh, plenty of them here. Ducks and carp right here over the little blue bridge. So after you move past the friendly Carp Cove, you will be exiting the bridge and heading straight ahead to the directory, which will direct you to the areas that you need to visit. So for example, there is a red X marks the spot showing we are right here. And everything is labeled as far as restrooms, the different um, gates, offices, photo stands, so on and so forth, so you can get familiar with the area, just to kind of showcase where we, what we do have here. There's a ticket booth here if you want to purchase your tickets on the spot, but it is recommended to do them in advance online that we are guaranteed a spot on your particular trip, which does run several times a day. There's vending machines over there, some general seating, boats are in the background. There is a peg leg pirate sitting there and Matt said his favorite letter is R. <laughs> And right on the river's edge here are a few other boats. And they are indeed river paddle boats. They are paddle boat powered, paddle powered, I guess you could say. So it's a pretty cool experience to be on a true authentic paddle boat. They have a few of them here. One of them is currently out on their tour. We have the next one at 2 p.m. And they also have a dining experience one too, where you could dine aboard one of these magnificent boats. But we are just doing the sightseeing tour and one of the reasons we're doing it is because of you guys. During my previous Pittsburgh videos, there's many people who commented saying, next time you're in Pittsburgh, do the Gateway Clipper Tour. I wasn't really familiar with what it is, looked it up and found out it's this incredible paddle boat, river boat tour adventure. But unfortunately, each time I've been here, it hasn't been operating either due to time of season 
or the particular day that I was here, I wasn't running. But I've been checking the website and they were running today, Wednesday, and had availability for 2 p.m. So we pre-purchased our tickets. It was only 25 bucks a person. And not only is it gonna give us some fantastic views of the city, but it's also gonna educate us as well because there's a narrator on board who's gonna tell us a lot of facts and history surrounding the great city of Pittsburgh. So I'm really excited for this. We're gonna be waiting around for about half an hour for our next trip to uh, head out at 2 p.m. And we're gonna give you some views deck side, top side of the boat, and let the narrator share his knowledge of the city. And of course, I'll chime in from time to time too. Speaking of which, here comes the Gateway Clipper right now. I'm gonna watch it make its way into the docking area here. Those people will on board. And then shortly after that, we'll be boarding ourselves. like the castaway wrap I don't see Wilson all right time to board now this is not a true authentic steam river boat it is diesel powered but it does replicate a uh, steam one so there's multiple decks you can go on different levels and me and Matt I think we're gonna pick right up front here This is known as the Three Rivers Queen. You can see the artificial stacks there for steam powered. You can smell the diesel fumes in the air. But yeah, this is a really cool experience. Seating options all over the place and uh, wherever you wanna go, you have a great view. Uh, I'm gonna give you a brief tour of the boat once uh, Matt gets back. But uh, as we make our way on the tour, I'm gonna kinda hang out in one area and just take in the sights and listen to the narrator to learn more about this incredible city. Now, I don't know if it's just me, but the gentleman down there in the black shirt with the shades on, bald head, looks a lot like Rick from Las Vegas Pawn Stars. I think it's his doppelganger. All right, we're gonna go for a quick tour. I'm gonna show you the different platforms and decking here. We're at the uh, captain's house, wheelhouse right here. There's the artificial smokestacks. There's plenty of uh, seating up here, tables. I believe they do have a beverage service as well. So this is a big open platform here where primary seating is, but where most people are also hanging out. And we head down the steps down here and we'll bring us down to the lower deck, which will be right behind the paddle wheel. And I'll be able to give you a pretty cool view of that as it's just spinning here, keeping the boat in place. So yeah, as I mentioned, it is a true authentic paddle boat which will be propelling our boat along the three rivers. Now there is an indoor area where they do have snacks and stuff available. I'll give you a brief look at that. They have a seating in here. There's actually a bar there, snacks, beverages. They do serve a dinner for the certain special trips that they do have. But yeah, you come here, get yourself uh, some indoor seating or your favorite beverage and or snack. Since this is a one hour boat ride, it's a good chance you may get thirsty or hungry. So they do take care of that for you here. All right, so that was our brief look and tour of the Three Rivers Princess river boat, paddle boat here at Station Square. I'm gonna grab my seat next to Matt and we're gonna be uh, departing momentarily. So I'd like to ask Matt, first impressions so far, what he thinks. Of, of everything of the boat here of the boat i i love it i haven't gone on one of these probably in over 20 years since i graduated high school so this is uh this is gonna be a real treat the only paddle boat experience i've been on similar to this is the one at walt disney world although that's not a true paddle boat that does ride on a rail in the water there in magic kingdom this is my first true authentic river boat experience aboard a real paddle boat and special thanks to matt though for joining me for this because this is something we talked about planning our trip here and once I told him about it he's like yep buy me a ticket we're doing it so <laughs> glad to have him part of it as well most importantly though I'm glad to share it with all you guys
the shit out of Yeah, so this uh, <laughs> laid on the horn, we all almost jumped over the rail. <laughs> Rick from Pond Stars, come on, let's go. We're ready to shove off. <laughs> Excuse That's me. A warning this time. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, we are We're officially of out. The dock here at the uh, uh, Gateway. Just talking to these nice young ladies behind us here, who are all the way from South Carolina, visiting yeah, some family and friends. <laughs> and this is every, you guys said first time in Pittsburgh. First time ever. Yeah, and Beautiful. Much like what I've been saying in all the videos I've done so far, is uh, I've absolutely fallen in love with this city. And we're passing by the rest of the fleet over here on our right. The big one actually gets pushed by that little tugboat type boat. That was like a dinner boat there. And you may hear some music, it sounds like a calliope. I heard that from the distance earlier. It's kind of amusing to hear it. Princess boat and then a couple others there. So they have a nice collection of boats for their river boat experience. Just a few moments, we're gonna be passing underneath one of the many bridges here in Pittsburgh which I've mentioned in the past, is known as the City of Bridges. More bridges here than any other place in the world. And right over there is where me and Matt were standing earlier, watching the Gateway Clipper from a distance. In the Ohio River, our fleet has been sailing these three rivers now for over 60 years. Actually got started out with our very first vessel. Got a great price on an old fishing boat from Lake Erie. Over 2,000 river miles, very obscure river miles with no direct connection. It took 30 days and 30 nights and pulled up to the left hand side where all the cars were parked on the Monongahela Wharf and did its very first trip with Girl Scout. Jimmy Clipper fleet remains to the left until 1982 where John Colling then moved his fleet over to the right hand side where today we have over five vessels not only doing sightseeing crews but private charters, events, corporate events, weddings all up and down our three rivers. And here to tell you all about that today is your narrator and tour guide, Andy. Better known as Rick. <laughs> okay, folks, welcome aboard to Gateway Clipper Fleet's Queen. How's everybody doing up here? All right, not bad, not too bad. How many of you guys are from Pittsburgh up here? Okay, more than normal. Okay, very good. If you're not from Pittsburgh, welcome aboard. If you are from Pittsburgh, welcome aboard. I'm going to have you guys face forward. Here's why. You're going to end up looking over your shoulder and you will be entertaining after a while. Okay. My tour is a little different from the standard. I try to deliver as much information as I can, culture, current events, history, landmarks, geography, a little bit of everything. So we're going to jump right in uh, to the information, not the river. Okay. <laughs> We are on the Monongahela River. This is one of four that we have here in the city of Pittsburgh. Not three, four. I'll explain that in a little bit. Fourth river underneath the, the ground. Monongahela is different from almost every river in the planet. Does anybody know why? Very good. Yes, it starts south and flows north. There's only a handful <laughs> of rivers that do that. The most notable would be the Nile River in Africa. For those of you not from Western PA, the names of our rivers have Native American descent in them. So sometimes it is a long name. So what we call the Monongahela is just simply the long. Also, if you're visiting from not from PA, you won't hear too many locals who say Pennsylvania. They're going to call our state PA. Make everything a little bit easier. And then for the last portion of our trip, I'm going to teach you a little bit of Pittsburgh E. So those of you not from this area, you'll be able to speak uh, the number one ugliest accent in the United States. <laughs> That's a badge of honor. That is not a knock on us. Okay, it's one Oxford Center that has all the black and gray stripes. Believe it or not, that four tower building sees better profits and better work productivity than any other tower in downtown. Why in the world would that building see better work productivity and profits? Doesn't make sense, but it does. If you look at the design, you see we're going to be spending a few bridge. What they did, folks, they put four octagonal shaped towers together. And they did that to maximize corner office space. Folks that work in a high rise want corner offices with nice views. That's exactly why I do what I do. So why wouldn't you? So what they noticed is with all the excess corner offices, folks started to compete over those offices. When you compete, you bring your best foot forward and it all folded down into better profits and higher work, higher work productivity. That is mostly office space with some high end retail shops in the lobby floors like Rolex and Rolls Royce. 
Now behind us is the oldest bridge in the city of Pittsburgh, the Smithfield Street Bridge. It's only built in 1883. We have 446 bridges, which is more than any other city in the land. We are beating Venice Italy by three bridges. They have 443. <laughs> Their number tends to fluctuate, though. They have much smaller bridges a lot, so they can take them down and put new ones up. So their number like I said, city of bridges, over 400 bridges. World. That's incredible. As we go down to Monongahela, we're about to cross underneath the busiest bridge in western Pennsylvania by far. The Ghost Bridge style bridge connects to Fort Pitt Tunnel. This is the Fort Pitt Bridge. Now, a couple of things. One of the things I love about Pittsburgh is it tells you its own history. It tells you what happened, where it happened, who was involved. So the names of everyday streets, towns, counties, and landmarks are those being named named after. This is no different. Named after Fort Pitt, which we'll talk about in a second. This bridge is so much fun. Because you have up to four minutes to go down to, what, three with 300 feet to make it happen? Oh, it's a ball. And it's a tunnel to provide us with traffic jams at least three, four times a day. So, But the double-edged sword of that is the view coming out of the Fort Pitt Tunnel has been voted as the number two most picturesque view in the nation, just behind the pink and So, what the deal is, if you go into that tunnel, you can't see the city of Pittsburgh whatsoever. You see a large American flag with a little building beside it. That was originally part of Fort Pitt. That's called the Fort Pitt Blockhouse. That little building is older than our own country is. To make a long story short, the history of this area can be summed up pretty quickly. The Seneca Native American tribe dominated it, then colonial powers came in and proclaimed this area theirs. It had a lot of uh, military strategic importance. They had a good view, uh, they had a valley they could protect with the rivers, so the French built a fort over here called Fort Duquesne. Then General John Forbes came in, built the road to Pittsburgh with 7,000 redcoats. The French said, I'm not dying here today. They left and torched their own fort. The British then moved in and built Fort Pitt. Fort Pitt was located in Point State Park as well. Uh, if you ever wondered where Pittsburgh got its name from, that's where it came from, William Pitt. If you ever wondered how we got black and gold as our colors, those are the colors on the Pitt family crest. That is how we got black and gold. Also, Point State Park today, though, is 36 acres of peace and quiet, or not, whatever you want to do. People come out to exercise, read, picnic, uh, gather, whatever you like to do. The Three Rivers Arts Festival and the Three Rivers of Ghana, when it happens, are over here to your right as well. So people come out, they enjoy the Point of Pittsburgh. The big draw to the Point is obviously the fountain. Now, the fountain used to be manually controlled. Somebody in the morning time or whenever would come out to these outhouses, they would set the pressure of the fountain, which ultimately dictated the height of the fountain, okay? The fountain could go up to 150 feet in length, or 150 feet in height. Here's the problem. When it was that high, the wind would grab that water, take the water all the way down to the Wyndham Hotel. This went on for years, where it would get the entire Wyndham soaked wow. from head to toe. So finally, they now have a computer that controls that fountain. So if the wind picks up, you'll see the fountain lower to make sure the water stays right there. You can come out and dip your feet into the outer ring. Um, I have jumped in it twice. They get all hot and bothered if you swim in there. I don't know. <laughs> you can try it at your own peril. Nothing will happen, though. So, folks, this is the confluence, the forks, or the point. This is what makes Pittsburgh Pittsburgh. This is where the Monongahela River meets the Allegheny to create the Ohio River. The Ohio starts right at the tip of the point and continues 981 miles south-southwest to Cairo, Illinois, where it then meets up with the Mississippi River, making Pittsburgh accessible from anywhere in the world via our waterways. You could go to the Gulf of Mexico via Pittsburgh and the rivers. Up and down Mount Washington, that is one of two inclines we have. That's the Duquesne Incline. We have two inclines, folks. What's interesting is Mount Washington, over to your right, those trees are no more than 85 years old. The reason for that is because this used to be a coal mine, and it was one big, black, dusty coal hill. If you look at pictures of it from uh, back in the day, there's no trees at all. They had 17 inclines going up and down the hill. Their job description was to, live, to deliver coal from the top to the bottom, where the trains and station square, which is now entertainment, would deliver it to its multiple destinations of refineries and factories in the area. Let's talk about the Hidden State Fourth Park River I did a video on. The North Shore. It's called the Wisconsin Glacier Flow. It's an aquifer, about 60 feet underneath the river. It provides all of the folks on the North Shore with drinking water out of their tap that is not only naturally purified but contaminant-free due to geothermal heat. So they get some of the best crystal clean drinking water right out of their uh, spigot, is what we call it, 
right over here on your left. Okay, we're moving there, Jay. <laughs> also on your left, you have the Pittsburgh water steps. Now, it's not much to look at right now. That's if Pittsburgh. you want to see my video on the Hidden right. Fourth River, quick, check down below in the description. PNC. To your left, this is PNC Park, home of the five-time World Series champs. Yes, we won five times. The Pittsburgh Pirate Major League Baseball team. This is my favorite park in the big leagues to see a game. I'm not the only one. ESPN.com, Raiders uh, Digest, Sports Illustrated, all feel the same way I do. Couple reasons why, folks. Opened up in 2001 to replace Three River Stadium. PNC Park is one of two stadiums in the big leagues where you can hit a baseball into a natural source of water. Just us and San Francisco share that trait. Takes about a 440 feet shot and above to hit the river, either a bounce in or fly in. So that's a monster home run to right field but it's been done a bunch of times. Second, wouldn't matter if you sat in the highest nosebleed in the furthest corner seat, you're never farther than 88 total feet from the playing field. Folks, 88 feet from the American flag to the bow of the ship. You are on top of the field, it doesn't matter where you sit. All these bridges here are three, incredible. and I saw a game about three years ago. We both sat along the outfield wall, we could harass the outfielders, we ate and drank, 71 There's a steel tower, or hotels, right over there somewhere. You know, a Bucko's game. We love our Buckos. They've been in the rebuilding phase for 30 years, but we're getting there. We're getting there. We love them. This bridge right here is the first of three sister bridges. There's no bridges in the world that sit side by side by side that are all absolutely identical, made from the same set of architectural plans. They're self suspension style, and they won many awards for that. This medicine. To Got confirmation of the steel care. tower Some is the tallest building the in Pittsburgh. Successful polio over 900 vaccine. feet. The very first and successful multi organ, multi -organ heart, liver, and kidney transplant, as well as the very first dual This hand bridge is pretty amazing. Looks like a double decker two, train bridge. Higher education. Somebody, somebody actually climbed all the way to the top and graffiti that. That is nuts. As well. This is the David L. Lawrence Convention Center, folks. This is one of the largest green convention centers in the United States. And it's monthly utility bill. I don't think it's double decker. This might be uh, double tracked as well. That, that is a massive train bridge. Concave roof collects falling rainwater to be fed to the trees on the outside of the building. We all know what those do, right? Photosynthesis gives us oxygen to breathe. The large amount of windows on the side are there to, live, to let uh, evening hour sunlight through, so that way the entire building is illuminated on the interior without flipping a switch. Pretty ingenious. We definitely have some conventions that are some are huge, some are strange. Uh, the Anthrocon, you guys know who they are? The birds. They come to town. They wear big animal suits. <laughs> a lot of people are like, what in the world? But here's Furries. the thing, when they come to town, they bring about nine to ten million dollars with them. They're welcome in Pittsburgh twice on Sundays, every day of the week. Come on out, come on out. <laughs> This bridge is the Fort Wayne Railroad Bridge. It's still a working railroad bridge, but on the top portion only. Oh, uh, top portion only now. Now as we go up here, folks, what Brian's That's double decker do train bridge. Look straight ahead of us to the left. You see where it says Heinz Loft. That is the old Heinz factory where all the Heinz products got started and distributed to the United States. That's where the magic happens, right there. Now, Heinz has since moved to Ohio for their bottling operations. Would Pittsburgh level that building? No way, no way. That has culture and history. So what they did is they renovated it and created high-end loft apartments that are some of the coolest in the city. Some apartments have 60-foot ceilings in them. Wow. Uh, the other half is being used by well, a look at the tops of these, again, over there. Yeah. Steam. You may have wow. dinner in what was a 110 year old steel mill that's been turned into a restaurant. Or maybe you have an adult beverage of what was an 80 year old firehouse that's been turned into a microbrewery. It's very unique and preserves our culture and history. The one old Heinz factory, straight across, the right in the middle of the screen. Made from our materials. We also were a high, uh, we were high producer of iron, aluminum, glass, brass, electrical components, electrical equipment. We do not make near the amount of materials that we used to, but materials that come from Pittsburgh tend to cost a little bit more just because of where they come from. So if you're not, you come under the four lowest bridges to get here. By the time you come up and read, oh no, we're not going to make it, half of your boat would be sheared off and stuff under those bridges anyway. What a so shot, wow. It, but it's not quite. Just wanted to jump in here really quick. They're doing a little three minute um, break for the commentator. And just to give you a moment to kind of just uh, enjoy the boat ride in silence but so far i'm having a fantastic time hopefully you are as well they're super knowledgeable not only about things that maybe you don't have the full facts on but they share little tidbits of uh knowledge about you know some of the markings on the bridges some of the prior or new coming abouts of the buildings and businesses so much to learn so much to take in but obviously in this video i'm only sharing a little bit with you guys because i want you to come here for yourself and do the tour but 
without a doubt, we're getting our money's worth and then some. This is so amazing, so incredible. And we have a perfect vantage point to see everything. And it's just a really great experience. One of the best ways to, to see Pittsburgh from the uh, Three Rivers. So once they continue, we'll be back with the video. Not sure if you guys can see on camera, I'll try and crop into that Renaissance building straight ahead of us. It has like an in-cropping where it's uh, kind of concave, I believe, where it's kind of going inside and curved around, but still part of the uh, structural type of building. Give you a quick view from the top deck here. Like I said, anywhere you come, you're not gonna miss out. There's Matt down there. Can yeah. I ask you a question? Yeah. I don't mean any offense by this, but has anyone ever said that you look like Rick from Pawn Stars? Oh, uh, one other person, but yes, I do. Yeah, okay. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm just, just kidding. Um, I get uh, Billy Joel. Billy Joel, yep. Yeah. I'm like doppelganger for someone. Because, yeah. because from a distance, I saw the glass of the shaved head, I'm like, that's Rick from Pawn Stars. I have gotten that one other time. Yeah. yeah, Philly Joel I see too, but that's a compliment though. Thank you, appreciate it, <laughs> appreciate it. We're head down, see the uh, paddle in action. If you want some shade, great spot to sit here. A little strong on the exhaust fumes though. Look at that. I'm looking where we just came from. I honestly can't praise this experience enough. This has been one of the best things I've done in a long time. And not only am I able to share it with Matt, but have all of you along. I mean if I was by myself, I'd have a great time, but this is just incredible to see the city from the river, to learn more about it. It just makes me fall in love and appreciate the city that much more than I already did. They just say earlier that this riverboat up here is uh, an overnighter. You can actually sleep on there and it's visiting temporarily. That is, I think he said 90 feet long. It's a big one. ...to go to the IMAX. It's all covered in one fare. That is the USS Raekwin. Who do you guys think was allowed to take? The Rivers Casino on your right has 10,000, uh, I'm sorry, 1,200 electronic table games, um, 500 card and table games, buffets, bars, the mini amphitheater on the river's edge is also popular. They're building a hotel right next to it, so that way they can keep you close while you go there and come back again days at a time. It's like it used to, for obvious reasons. Let's so go really quick, Keisha. Is, this is the best view of Pittsburgh, and now, I agree. Scary, this is a glue. money shot right here, to say the least. Cargo that helped make that Sounds crazy. A couple years ago, the guys went to the Empress to set up for a morning time cruise, and there was a bobcat on the top deck. Most adorable little mean thing you've ever seen. <laughs> um, they got that. It was not harmed at all, and they set him free. I'm an outdoorsman. I've never even seen one out the woods. I'm after a lot, but yet it ended up on the top deck. I understand that. Now, just in that case I didn't get on camera before, you did state that the fountain at Point State Park is electronically controlled, which means depending on the weather conditions, they could raise or lower the height of water. Back in the day, it was mechanically controlled, manually controlled, and the height of the water was so high, 150 feet high, the water would reach the Wyndham Hotel in the distance. That's why I've seen pictures of the water much higher, but every time I see it, the water is much lower. And that is because uh, they keep it lower to avoid it blowing away the in the wind, so makes sense. To do that. The paddle wheel in the back is not a true propulsion system. It used to be, but we are a fully modern boat with two main engines in the back. Ah, I clever. All the time, do we have thrusters? None of our boats, <laughs> except for the one you're on, has thrusters. This one does have a bow thruster, which basically pulls water from one side of the bow to the other to help the Just for aesthetics. Yep, it'll catch the water and spin for aesthetics. That's right. Okay, guys, for the last portion, let's teach you a small bit of Pittsburgh East before we take off for the day here. Okay, so in Western PA, uh, like I said, we were voted number one obvious accent in America. Awesome, we'll take that. That's pride. That is not a hindrance. Accent. 
Like I said earlier, these supports here are for the former Wabash Railroad used to go continue, go straight through Mount Washington. And they are privately owned. So we are back on land, just uh, on board the Three River Queen. And before we go any further, I have to make a minor correction. I did state that these were true, authentic paddle boat river boats. Well, I was mistaken. <laughs> it's a grand scheme. It's only for appearance. They did state on board that these are dual motor propulsion boats. So they have two motors, diesel engines, as I could smell the fumes. I thought maybe it was diesel engines propelling the wheel, but no, it's just for aesthetics. Just gives the look. It is a regular propulsion boat, I believe, with propellers. So that was my first mistake, but they do a great job at making it look authentic. Other than that, though, I can't rave enough. I mean, this was one of the most incredible experiences I've ever had here in Pittsburgh. If you ever visit, whether for a day or for a week or whatever, even passing through, go on their website, which I will link down below, Book a ticket, and I guarantee you will come off feeling like you had such an incredible experience, which I did. I know Matt did. Watch this video as well, which will also be linked down below. But we did it together, and we both have memories to share and to relive time and time again about what this was like. Because not only was the boat ride special and amazing and gave you one-of-a-kind views, but the knowledge we learned and just the whole experience, you know, as a big whole for lack of a better word was just unbelievable i mean the crew was outstanding friendly polite knowledgeable everything was affordable and even the people on board we were chatting with those women behind us they were you know saying how incredible it was I, I just i don't want to ramble but i have nothing bad to say other than i wish i did it sooner but i'm glad it finally happened but anyways guys we'd love to hear your thoughts on today's video any uh, questions comments i'd love to try to answer them for you otherwise hope you enjoy the riverboat tour i certainly did and we'll be doing it time and time again when i come back here probably with matt every september we're probably going to do this as an annual thing so anyways thank you so so much for watching for joining us for this adventure and more importantly i will definitely see you in the next video